Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Before we get into today's upload, a couple links. Also, I'd like to let everyone know that today's upload is going to be full of terrifying and very, very interesting encounters from around the country. Onto the links. As you know, I rely on my Patreon, my PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. All of those links are in the description below. I also have a second channel for creepypasta, fan fiction, and scary voice acting. Stories that, well, they just don't fit on this channel. Now, if that's anything that you're into, follow that link and give those stories a listen. You may just like what you hear. Last but not least, Dogman, Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 and 2, the audiobook, is available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. It was written by Tom Lyons and produced and narrated by me, Jeffrey Nadalny. Now, I've taken enough of your time, everyone. Let's get on with today's upload. Shall we? Today's first encounter comes to us from the great state of Wyoming. Bob Jackson in 2003, also known as Action Jackson, was legendary among park supporters, notorious among outfitters and scofflaws for his enforcement of park rules and regulations. He retired as a Yellowstone Ranger in 2004. Few people have ever known Yellowstone's backcountry and its wildlife like Jackson. The first time I heard anything was in the mid to late 70s. An outfitter and I were riding up Fan Creek in the northwest section of the park. Up the drainage in Stellara Creek, we heard a sound that just kept going and going. It was probably a mile away. It filled the whole valley up, kind of a thousand-like elk going to their death. I couldn't believe this thing had that much volume for that long of a period of time. He had never heard anything like it either. A couple weeks later, I was coming out of Sportsman Creek, taking a trail which comes out of Fan Creek. I was 11 miles back in, up high in a subalpine fir meadow complex. I was on a steep side hill with horses and in the woods, but down below, about 40 to 50 yards, there was a kind of fairly flat meadow with dense subalpine thickets. There were these low fir growths that have a centerpiece tree and then everything kind of cone shapes to the ground. They were about 20 yards wide or so. The horses were flaring their nose and snorting, like they do when a grizzly bear is really close. But I could see fairly good all around and I couldn't see one. So I started looking down below me and the horses were generally agitated. They wanted to get out of there. I held them, but only with effort. I looked up to see where the grizz was, and I saw a deer at the edge of the thicket. All at once, it bolted and started jarring ahead perpendicular to me. Right then, coming out of the other side, was this thing that was running on two feet. It was black like a bear, and it had long arms and ran. I think I held it for about 30 seconds. But it got scared and then came out. It ran, but not super fast. It ran to the other thicket and went to the angle out of the thicket to another thicket about 40 to 50 yards away. At this point, the creature was 75 yards down slope. It kept hitting these thickets, trying to get away from me. I've never seen a bear do that. They'll always take a straight line. The first thing I thought was bear, but right away I realized this black, shaggy thing was not a bear. This was smart. I've never seen an animal trying to pick up protection as it fled. I tied that together with the sound on the other side of the drainage. It wasn't that tall. It looked like it was like six foot, maybe six and a half. The side of its face looked like it had a lot of fur. Most of the time it was angling away, so I only got a good look at the head for probably 10 steps. The proportions of the torso, it 
looked more stocky than anything else. I noticed the arms swung more than a human's would, and it didn't have elbows cocked. This was no hoax. I've ridden maybe 50 to 70,000 miles in the backcountry on horseback, and you encounter a lot of bears when you do that. This thing, whatever it was, the horses looked straight down to it. One time, I met a guy in the northeast section of the park. He had camped illegally. He said he heard a noise really close to him. I made him describe it. He said it was probably within 20 yards. When another outfitter heard that sound as well. That would have been back in the early 80s for both of those. Another time, a crew examining blister rust, a disease of white bark pine in the 70s, came on an elk in the southeast corner of the park. They came on a deboned elk and saw these really strange but large footprints. They got scared and headed out. On that same trip, they heard a really weird noise up near Mountain Creek. Jackson also recounted this trackway. One time, I was skiing into Hart Lake on the Therafore. We were five to six miles east of the road, myself and a few others. All at once, we saw these footprints going across the trail. There was any path, and no one used to ski that far back. These were very large footprints stretched out far apart. It was deep snow, but it was a fairly distinct track. That was the first and only time I had seen a track. In the early to mid-80s, in the same drainage as Mountain Creek, we were just coming into the Howell Creek Cabin near Eagle Creek Pass at 8,500 feet. We were coming in right before dark and we heard that noise. I timed it at 26 seconds, about three to 400 yards beyond the cabin up in the drainage. I checked the next day but could not find any tracks. Whatever that thing is, it doesn't let up to take a breath. It's like a mechanical, rhythmical, I can't describe it. It isn't like a mountain lion or a bear, and a bear can make some pretty weird noises. I heard no other reports of Sasquatch until three to four years ago. I was in Mountain Creek, and I heard this thing again. A district ranger once took a sighting from a backpacker near Beulah Lake. That would have been about the 70s. Just west of the south entrance, apparently, the person watched one on the other side of a small lake for ten minutes. The ranger felt the witness was very sane and credible. Today's second encounter comes to us from Nebraska. I'm writing this on behalf of my father-in-law. On October 29, 2006, he, his wife, and a friend were hiking on the lookout trail and Chadron State Park. Walking east, they came to a place where the trail takes a sharp turn to the south. As they rounded the turn, my father-in-law's friend looked towards the north and notices someone or something standing on top of the limestone ridge, just about three to four hundred yards away. He stopped my father-in-law. My mother-in-law was walking a bit ahead of them, too. He pointed the figure out to him. Even from that distance, they could tell that there was some unusual features about this figure. It was unusually tall and covered from head to toe in black fur. They watched it for five minutes as it stood on the ridge and swayed back and forth, before it casually walked behind the limestone outcrop and disappeared into the pine forest. They have no idea what this creature is that they witnessed. The only reasonable explanation we could come up with at the time was since it was so close to Halloween, someone was running around in the forest in a costume. But the area is extremely remote, a combination of national forest land and the Nebraska State Parkland. And this explanation, though plausible, is highly unlikely. Today's third encounter comes to us from Alaska. I was part of a group of about a dozen Army personnel training in the area. It was summer, a warm, clear day. We were above the tree line and had been camped there for several days. 
I was looking across the nearest valley when I spotted movement. It was on the base of a steep mountainside and bare, rocky terrain with snowfields descending down into small gullies on the hillside. Whatever this thing was, it was moving up the valley about a half a mile away. When it crossed the snow, you could plainly see that it was not a bear. It was walking upright with long strides and its arms swinging. It moved fast across the white snow. It was dark in color, just like a bear. I've seen bears many times since in the same type of terrain, and they don't move like this did. It was far too big and fast to be a human. Bears can and do walk upright usually for short distances when they need to see or smell something and need the height. They don't travel in this manner and not in difficult terrain. I pointed out to the other guys and we watched it till you could no longer see it. When it was out of the snow, it was hard to see against the rocks. We wanted to go look for tracks, but everyone was scared to go down there. We had to sleep there that night, and nobody would go outside after dark. The next day, we got out and never went back. Twenty years later, I still would not go up there, even with a group and guns. The only thing that I've seen that makes sense is, I don't know, nothing. Today's fifth encounter comes to us from the great state of Tennessee. Myself, along with my two best friends, went down to see some family in Tennessee during the summer for a few days. While down there, we usually take some time to do some small game hunting. On our second to last day there, we went back for about a mile or two to try to find the property line, since the man who owned the land was in poor health and couldn't do it himself. He hadn't been able to go back there that far since about 15 years due to his poor health conditions. We noticed the deeper we went into the woods, we saw no animals, and that was interesting to us. Later that night, we were at the small pond with a bonfire when one of the friends decided he needed to go back to the house. We had heard something pacing back and forth on the hill behind us, but we figured it was probably just a coyote or a fox, so we didn't pay it too much attention. He had a Remington 870 shotgun with six shells of buck loaded anyways for the half-mile walk back to the house by himself. On the front of which he had mounted a flashlight about two minutes after he had left, we heard him fire all six shots in rapid succession. Once we got to him, he was scared stiff. All he could say was that something was staring down at him and showing us how far apart the eyes were. We didn't stick around long, thinking that he may have just injured a bear, so we ran back to the house. Once we got back there, he told us that he turned a corner to see the eyes staring down at him just off the path. He yelled at the animal twice. It didn't move, so he shot. The animal was about 10 feet away and still managed to run off. Well, he went to sleep in the house, and his brother and I went to go to bed down outside in the barn loft. I had just lied down in my sleeping bag when I heard the most terrifying scream I had ever heard to this day. This animal screamed for a solid 20 to 30 seconds in one breath. I could tell that it was coming from the area we had just been. However, it was so loud, even still, I got the chills thinking about it. It only let out one scream and then stopped, but as soon as it did it, the entire forest felt silent. The only sound heard was the horse that had been spooked running inside its stable. I didn't get much sleep that night. The next morning, we had to leave, so we didn't have much time to investigate the spot in the daylight. However, we did confirm the spot where he had saw the animal with a steep incline about 15 feet off the trail. I found no shot impacts from the shotgun. Even searching the ground, leading us to all believe that the animal had been shot. Since it had rained the night before, the ground was still wet. I couldn't find but maybe one blood 
spot. We tried to track it, but we didn't have the time and the woods were so thick it was difficult to find any prints. There was only one deep indent, which may have been a print, but we really couldn't tell. All I know is this animal was big and still ran off after being shot six times with buckshot from 10 feet away and still had enough air in its lungs to scream as loud as it did for as long as it did. I know a lot about animals, and the only thing that I know of that could be that big would be a bear. But even a healthy, uninjured bear does not make the sound this animal did. Today's fifth encounter comes to us from Idaho. A friend and I were carrying its supplies on foot to a bear bait site about two miles west of Highway 89. This area is restricted to foot or horseback only and is on the Idaho-Wyoming border. I'd carried in the bait barrel for some bait items a week earlier, having noted some bear tracks in the snow along the creek the first week of April. We walked along the foot trail early morning and about a mile in came to a fresh carcass of a muskrat right on the trail, which was about 30 feet up the creek and along the bend of the mountain. We were both startled by the dead muskrat because it was just there with no evidence of a predator in sight. I suggested that it may have been dropped by an eagle, but honestly, there was no sightings of an eagle on our walk. Another mile in, and we began placing our bait in the barrel. Having noted that the bait already there had not been disturbed by anything, we were preparing to leave the site when we heard the crackling of branches. And looking in the direction of the noise, we watched a large piece of a tree tumbling down the mountainside toward us. About 40 yards up on a ledge stood something bipedal, the color of a moose leaning against the remains of a tree. I asked my friend, what is that? He replied, must be a moose. And I answered, but it's only on two legs. He didn't reply, but started walking back to the trail. I looked back at the animal, which was seven to eight feet tall, as best as I could estimate. Very broad at the shoulders, with legs that appeared long and thin compared to the rest of its body. It was hard to make out the shape of its head, as I couldn't see a neck and its head appeared to be bent down, looking at us. It then quickly moved behind the broken tree into the tree line. I wished I had my binoculars that day, but in our haste to get on the trail that morning, I accidentally left them in my truck. My feeling while returning along the trail to the truck was almost of myself being stalked, a strange roll reversal. My friend moved quickly down the trail, no word spoken about what was on that hillside. When I recounted the experience a couple months later to friends, I had forgotten the part about the dead muskrat, which my friend quickly interjected to them as a very disturbing incident to him. This bear bait site, coincidentally, is along a drainage that connects a larger creek near where a year ago I had heard some strange and disturbing sounds on a mountain pass while hunting deer. Today's sixth encounter comes to us from the great state of Missouri. Late one night in July of 2019, I was driving on a back road somewhere in mid-Missouri. I was the only vehicle on the road for what seemed like quite a while. I had my high beams on, keeping my eye on the road, listening to some tunes when all of a sudden, this humanoid-like creature ran at a high speed across the road in front of me, causing me to swerve to avoid hitting it. I grew up in the Midwest, so I'm not unfamiliar with things crossing my path at night, but this creature, it left me absolutely terrified. I've never seen anything like it before or since, and I have absolutely no answer as to what this thing was. It was running on all fours but it was large, I want to say probably four feet from the ground to the top of its back. It looked like a tall, lanky, skin and bones, bare-skinned, naked humanoid with long black hair and a sunken face with empty eyes. When those eyes met with mine, pure terror came over me. 
not understanding what I was seeing. Today's seventh and final encounter comes to us from the New England area. This happened during the summer of quarantine. I was running through a wooded trail in my area, just jogging, hoping to see some wildlife, maybe a deer or some other animals. We have deer all around our area, so not too far-fetched. I understand this might seem odd or weird, but it's true. I was alone at the time, wearing a black t-shirt, gray joggers, running shoes, plus a light neon orange vest to dislude any hunters in the area. Less of a serious thing, more of a precaution. I was jogging and had earbuds in while listening to some music. Less intelligent on my part, yes. I passed by a pond, and I slowed down because lying there are two bodies. One looked like a coyote of sorts, the other a deer. There were a lot of flies around the area. The coyote was untouched except for the killing blow to the stomach, but the deer was ransacked. As I go closer to the bodies, out of sheer curiosity, and neither of had rigor mortis, which seemed extremely odd considering it was afternoon around 4 p.m., and sunset that day was like 7.30-ish. Immediately, my guard goes up, as that means they died within the last two hours by something large and dangerous, given the fact that the coyote's stomach was slashed open and visible, sort of just brushed it off, but take out one earbud so I can keep an ear open while still enjoying my music. I keep running and start thinking. I hear panting and footsteps behind me. But then my rational brain realizes, oh, that's what I'm doing, breathing hard and running through the forest with freshly killed dead animals near me. So I start picking up my pace. What happened next stuck with me. A branch broke behind me something that I simply ran by and didn't step on. It snapped like something stepped on it. So I stopped panting and held my breath. I still heard panting, so my mind went, oh shit. But it was fairly faint. I thought, well, whatever is behind me will outrun me. So I'll come to a stop, heart pounding, pulse racing. I turn around slowly. There's nothing there. But I do see dark-haired, claw foot coming from behind a tree. This wasn't a bear's foot. It was splayed out with claws on each toe. There were five toes, I remember. It was also larger than my foot, and I'm an American size 11 men's. I whip around and start sprinting. I hear whatever it is start running as well. I get to the end of the path near the main road with cars going up and down. I get to the edge and turn around and there it is. Some sort of dog-like, wolf-like man. It had no tail and was on all fours with very dark brown, maybe black fur. The ears were straight up like a Doberman's. The eyes were yellow. The animal was very muscular in general, not like super toned but like naturally toned. I could see the muscles on it. It reared up on its hind legs. This creature was way over my head. I'm 5'10". It's probably seven and a half feet tall, I think. I'm almost certain that this was a werewolf or lichen or dog man. I really don't know what it's called. All right, guys, there you have it. Seven terrifying, but truly truly fascinating encounters to kind of just get you going. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about encounters like these that just, you know, I just, I keep, I picture them when I narrate these encounters, I'm, I'm picturing what is happening. It's playing out in my head and it creeps me out. Sometimes I get really creeped out. Um, I'm recording this right now. It's going to be uploaded, you know, on Monday for Martin Luther King Day, but I'm recording it at two in the morning and uh, a little creeped out, even though I'm inside my safe house right now. So I don't know. These these encounters sometimes get to me. I sometimes have pretty creepy dreams as well.
but uh, that's par for the course, I guess, when you're just constantly reading terrifying encounters. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these encounters as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. And I'd like to thank everybody for supporting this channel and uh, actually for supporting the uh, audiobook. Thank you guys for everyone who has went out and purchased one. So far, I think I'm up to 233 which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's more than I thought. And I'm, I'm blessed. I feel truly blessed. I'd like to thank everybody who has donated to the Patreon. Um, thank you so much. And I just thank everybody who supports this channel because you guys really rock. You're the heart and soul of this channel. So with that, may the uh, great spirit watch over you and, uh, walk the path of life with you and keep you on the straight. Have a great night, guys.